uh, welcome to parul university sir uh, on behalf of the parul institute of commerce uh, parul university i dr ashwin patel welcome to you on our today's webinar uh, that uh, webinar title is review of related literature before we start i would like to introduce today's our speaker who is dr udit varsane sir sir have a very strong academic experience for over the last half decades currently he is working as an assistant professor in a pacific institute of business study in pacific university sir has also vast experience in different institute like sir served as assistant professor in pacific college mohanlal sukhadia university sir also work as an assistant professor in pacific institute of management in mba wings pacific university between 29 uh, 2019 sir also work as an guest lecturer for 2 years at uccms commerce college mohanlal sukhadia university sir also has been a very uh, good resource person and deliver so many uh, session multitude of workshop extension lectures training sessions webinar in both online and offline sir also deliver lectures in certified course in national stock exchange when we are talking about the sir academic qualification sir completed his phd in 2021 in pacific university udaipur sir also cracked their ugc examination with 97.33 percentile sir it's very very uh, good score sir and sir has also completed in gra uh, his graduation and post graduation with the first class position sir once again i heartily welcome to you this uh, this uh, webinar uh, for, uh, which one is related with the review of re uh, related literature sir over to you sir thank you thank you so so much dr patel thank you for the lovely introduction uh please sir right uh good morning one and all uh, i'm not going to waste much time since the time restrictions are on us and uh, we only have one hour with us so without any ado we'll just begin with our today's topic at hand uh before we begin today's session there are two things that i want to mention at the onset first you are not the only one struggling to read the literature or write the literature review okay most students that i have come across struggle with methods results and figures uh, that is the bulk of any scientific journal articles in um, general and many phd students they still find these section difficult to understand uh, second all sections become easier to read with experience all right so as you build deep practical knowledge it becomes easier to read the literature uh this in turn it will help you to build uh, even uh, deeper practical knowledge um which again it may makes it easier to review the literature uh so my dear friends uh the mere fact that you have tuned into today's webinar on review of literate uh, related literature uh i want each one of you to instill confidence in yourself that you are getting better at this all right so be encouraged uh you have traded your old ways for better goals better tools and rhythms um these strategies it will help you to finish your literature review as painlessly as possible and your subsequent literature reviews will only get, get easier all right so stay tuned with me and i can give you this assurance all right um to my great surprise i found that we uh, really teach our phd students how to do a good literature review um so yeah uh, i humbly thank faculty of commerce and management parul university who have given me an opportunity to uh, talk about this relevant topic um uh, well my uh, my finding was counter intuitive as the skills of doing a literature review are the backbone of our profession you can say and indeed without a decent literature review i don't think any academic paper or funding pro uh, proposal will uh, it will definitely fall apart right so uh, before we begin uh, just one last thing uh, among the last slides of this ppt you will find the list that i have compiled so far uh, i have highlighted some articles some software some websites that i personally found particularly interesting uh, or rather useful for different aspects of uh, writing up a good literature review so stay tuned till the end of this webinar to get the most out of it uh all right 
Yeah, so let's begin. What you are seeing right now on your screen is the list of things that you will be and uh, you will be able to understand better by the end of this webinar, right? So we do have some time restrictions, as I said before, so I might have to go a little bit faster through the slideshow, but I want each one of our viewer to learn at least one new thing today, okay? So I'm gonna save some time by skimming through topics that you can uh, randomly find lying around on blogs and on internet in general. Uh, but still, for those who wanna quench their thirst for knowledge, feel free to contact me later, all right? So let's quickly jump on to today's topic at hand. What is literature review? Um, a literature review is a description of the literature that is relevant to a particular field or topic, okay? So it gives an overview of, as you guys can see on the screen, it gives an overview of what has already been said in the past, who was the one who said it, that is the key writers, uh, what are some prevailing theories and hypotheses, the questions that are being asked and definitely what are the appropriate, most useful methods and methodologies to write the same, All right? Well, uh, uh, what makes the literature so painful to begin with? Let me uh, talk with, let me begin with that, All right? I'm so sorry, I think my camera is malfunctioning. Not an issue, uh, not an issue so, sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, journal articles are hard to read. All right. So, right at the onset of this, it's hard to read. It's one of the great ironies of science. Uh, Yeah, are we back? I think I disconnected them for a moment. Dr. Patil, can you hear me? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Is the audio working fine? I'm not sure. Yes, sir. can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a perfect. It's visible and you're audible, sir. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought I lost it uh, at some point. All right. So we were talking uh, uh, about the pain points, All right? So pain point number one is definitely I was talking about the journal articles. Uh, they are uh, bit, uh, they are hard to uh, read. Uh, yeah. So it's one of the uh, greatest um, ironies of the science in the modern world. We can say that researchers they make exciting discoveries and they but rather uh, going to the exciting part, they just make them dull with dense and boring writing, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure you have likely stumbled through plenty of wordy passages, rewriting, paraphrasing, changing of synonyms, adding punctuations, active to passive, and lot many other tricks and techniques, right? But no matter whatever you do, you still have no clue how to get it done in your next project. Right. So, yeah, I do understand that. And pain point number two that I have identified is journal articles are abundant, right? There are a lot of journal articles out there. The only thing worse than bad writing is lots of bad writing. And the academic literature has plenty of it, plenty. You can spend endless hours sifting through it all. Uh, let's just admit the moment you get your PhD thesis or your project work going, uh, moment you get the title, the first thing you do is you copy and paste the entire title as it is on Google Scholar. Bam. And results, plethora of articles, journals, research papers, endless literature, right? So how do we overcome these pain points, you may ask? Rather, why should we put ourselves through this pain, sir? Well, the answer is simple, my dear students. A good literature review advances your project on many fronts. Um, it helps you to design a novel research question. Uh, it sparks useful ideas for your experiment. It rather, uh, I would say it seeds your journal articles first draft, right? So these are the all things that they uh, that help your project to run smoothly, right? 
so the review of literature is uh, nothing but a it is it's a very significant portion uh, i must say of, of most academic writings since it orients both researcher and the reader to what research has already been done in your area till date so as to avoid you know the reinventing of the wheel you don't have to keep on going on on the same topics uh, and it also highlights the gaps in current knowledge that uh, present research will uh, your research will seek to address uh, literature reviews they also indicate that a uh, researcher is knowledgeable in their field of course it will add on to your personal uh, goodwill uh, it actually comes up with all those these features right i will quickly jump on to my next slide which is about the purpose of a review of literature right so why do you need to produce a literature review that is the question at hand a literature review is an analysis of what has already been published on a question or your issue uh, you discover key themes as you research and you synthesize the most interesting and relevant information in your review right uh, it is an opportunity to develop a deeper understanding of uh, your topic uh it may form the beginning of a bigger project uh, for example your uh, reports your dissertations your thesis your hello 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 हेलो हेलो i am so sorry for the inconvenience i guess my wifi is just not feeling like it today but i guess these are just part and parcel of an online webinar that we might have to accept with the technology and with the sir, not, sir please please sir not an issue <laughs> yes all right um i don't know where i lost it but i'll just begin with the new point next point uh, no problem uh all right so here uh, i would like to draw your attention my dear friends my dear students i would like to draw your attention towards one of the most important aspects in today's session the word synthesize all right synthesize usually when i ask my students uh, what do they understand by literature review the most common answer that i get is sir we got to summarize whatever work has been done in past related to our topic we just got to summarize it and put it on one piece of paper well this is where you are wrong right review of literature is not restricted up to merely summarizing the past work okay a literature review may consist of a uh, summary of key sources but in social sciences a literature review usually has an organizational pattern uh, it combines both summary and synthesis often within specific conceptual categories right uh, the next question that pops right up is sir what is the difference between two words well a summary is a recap of the important information of the source but a synthesis is a reorganization or you can say a reshuffling of that information in a way that informs you how uh, that informs the reader that how you are planning to investigate your research problem at hand right so synthesizing is basically one step ahead fine so uh, i want you to remember this word throughout this webinar so uh, i'm going to emphasize on this current of this word and then Uh, i'm pretty sure within next 10 minutes or 15 uh, you will definitely start liking this word better all right so when you write a literature review or any essay or any project report or dissertation anything 
you have to go beyond just summarizing the articles that you have read okay you need to synthesize the literature to show how it all fits together and how your own research it fits in that particular literature right synthesizing simply means combining okay uh, instead of summarizing the main points of each source uh, what you do is you put together the ideas and findings of multiple sources and in order to uh, you, you do all of this to in order to make an overall point right so at the most basic level what you can understand right now is that synthesizing involves looking for similarities and differences between your sources okay your synthesis should show the reader where the where the sources are overlapping or where they are diverging and what are the differences and what are the new approaches all right so how do we do it sir? how do we do the synthesis the word the new word that you are giving us today how do we do the synthesization right well after collecting the relevant literature you have got a lot of information to work through right and i'm pretty sure you have no clear idea how it all fits together so we have downloaded we have saved so many articles so many journals so many pdfs and everything but we don't know what to do and how to proceed with it right so before you can start writing what you need to do first and foremost thing what you need to do is you need to organize your notes in a way that allows you to see the relationship between sources okay one way to begin synthesizing the literature is to put your notes into a table okay you can see on the screen depending on your topic and the type of literature you are dealing with there are a couple of different ways that you can organize this the first one as you can see is the summary table right what is a summary table <coughs> excuse me a summary table it collects all the points of each source under consistent headings right uh, it's not restricted to this format you can definitely alter it uh, depending upon your needs and requirements but this is just a suggestive format right so uh, this is uh, this summary table it is actually a good approach if your sources tend to have a similar structure for instance like um, if you are writing uh, if you are if you are dealing with all empirical papers right your papers are based on observations then you can use a summary table okay so as you can see each row in the table it lists one source and each column it identifies a specific part of that source okay so you can decide which headings to include based on what is most relevant to the literature that you are dealing with right so uh, for example you might include columns for things like um, aims methods um, variables uh, population sample size conclusion uh, <coughs> for each study you briefly summarize each of these aspects and you can also include columns for your own evaluation right the summary table it gives you a quick overview of the key points of each source uh, this allows you to uh, group your sources by relevant simil similarities uh, or uh, rather i can say you can notice important differences or contradictions in their findings right second we have synthesis matrix uh, synthesis matrix is useful when your sources are more uh, varied it, they are uh, they are varying a lot in their purpose and their structure and everything right for example um, when you are dealing with books and essays uh, uh yeah so when you are dealing with um, books or essays that make different different variety of arguments about a single topic then you can use synthesis matrix right so each column in the table it lists one source and each row is labeled with a specific concept or a topic or a theme that recurs uh, across all or most of your sources fine so then for each source you summarize the main points or arguments related to the theme uh, the purpose of a synthesis matrix is nothing uh, the table uh, when you make the table the purpose is to identify the common points that connect the sources uh and at the same time you are definitely uh, you can see that where those points are diverging or they are disagreeing with it right uh, all right oh yes this is one of the most important things that i want to talk to you about break out of your disciplinary box right what do you mean by that thinking beyond your own discipline uh, inquiring into other disciplines about your research problem uh it can be a rewarding exercise in applying new ideas new theories new concepts to an older problem 
right for example uh, what might cultural anthropologists say about the continuing conflict in the middle east right so what do you think what might the anthropologists they might have to say about the conflicts in what ways might uh, geographers they uh, view the need for better distribution of social service agencies in large cities then how social uh, workers might study the issue right because in one way in in your career if you think of a problem in your uh, just by your own discipline in your own discipline you might be able to you might not be able to uh, look through other aspects of that particular problem right so you don't want to substitute a thorough review of core research literature in your discipline uh, but you know uh, particularly uh, when you think about your research problems from multiple vectors it is actually it actually works as a key strategy to find new solution for the older problems older as in the problem that you were already dealing with right so how do we get an access to all these new disciplines because since let's say so i am doing from commerce department right so so i have no clue what is going on in other like uh, physics department or in chemistry one right so you can uh, to overcome this hurdle what you can do is you can consult with a librarian or your faculty or your guide or even your fellow researchers from other streams and uh, you can talk about identifying the research databases in other disciplines um well to be very honest almost every field of study it has at least one comprehensive database devoted to indexing its literature right so you can definitely go along with that uh very quickly let me move on to next slide uh, how to conduct a phd literature review how to conduct a literature review all right <clears throat> step 1 step 1 before you start look at the brief criteria look at the brief criteria and any relevant examples that your faculties your tutors they have shown you right so right before you start just look at the nature of the data right then step 2 is the question establish the question or the basic concept that you want to investigate in your literature review right uh, you may need to do some uh, preliminary research on the general topic Uh, so that you can decide what is interesting and what is worthy of investigation but uh, trust me you need to establish the question first right then comes the important part the step 3 uh, that is research okay so for writing a good literature review you will need to be uh, systematic with your research right to make sure that you identify the relevant information correctly fine you may decide to look in specific databases or um, Uh, certain reviews that are uh, all or, or the, the reviews that are based on the results that you have received after entering specific keywords right keywords uh, we will discuss in upcoming slides the importance of keywords but uh, if you are researching a niche topic then you may need to think uh, creatively you know where you can find information because sometimes internet does not have answers to all your questions right sometimes you might have your whatever keywords whatever words you are inputting you might get lesser results or not so relevant results right so what do you need to do to uh, come across those hurdles well i will talk about keywords and changing your strategy a bit in upcoming slides and then we will talk about it right uh, okay i will uh, i can already say it's uh, 10 20 or so i'll just quickly move on to the next slide i'll just... key points that you need to uh, take keep into consideration uh, once you have settled on how to organize your literature review you are ready to write your uh, literature uh, review section right so when writing your review these are the few points that you need to keep in mind okay the first and foremost is use evidence right so what do you mean by evidence in literature review evidence is nothing but the citations the citations that we normally call it okay so as we call it the citations are very important why because it demonstrates that whatever you are saying and whatever you're going to write in your literature review is all valid okay second is you have to be selective okay you only have to select the most important points in each source to highlight uh, them in the review right the type of information that you choose to mention should relate directly to your research problem okay uh, there are a lot of ways to uh, mention it we, have, we will talk it uh, talk about it later like thematic way uh, or you can do it a methodological way or chronological way or brought to specific there are a lot of things i'll just uh, uh, come to that part later on but you need to be selective you need to select okay 
then uh, you have to use the codes the codes that we use as we call it you have to use that codes very sparingly okay you don't don't just randomly throw and sprinkle them uh, all over your literature review some short codes are okay if you want to emphasize a point or um, if what an author stated it you cannot easily paraphrase it then it is okay to use some short codes but just don't put in quotes a lot of quotes anywhere and everywhere right so um, next is summarize and synthesize uh, we have already talked about the term synthesization right so always remember always remember to summarize and synthesize your resources within each thematic paragraph as well as throughout the review right so throughout the review you have to uh, you can recapitulate the important features of a research study or uh, but but then you know at the same time you have to synthesize it by rephrasing the study's significance its importance and then you have to keep on relating it to your own work don't just keep on quoting other authors what they wrote in their researches this was the thing that they did it does not matter it does not mean it will not mean anything until unless you relate their study their point with your own point right so that is that comes to our next point you have to keep your own voice you have to uh, take the other literature other uh, authors part and then definitely you have to definitely uh, put it in your own voice right last but not the least the last point says uh, the use question use caution when paraphrasing right when para whenever you are paraphrasing a source that is not your own okay you have to be very cautious why be very cautious to represent the others authors uh, the other authors information because whatever opinion whatever op op uh, information the other author wants to share with the world and with you you need to be very cautious that when you are paraphrasing you do not lose track of the original meaning and original intention what that author had all right so uh, and also uh, not to mention uh, not to forget over here you need to definitely cite the work if you are para even if you are paraphrasing you definitely have to cite the work that you are using all right okay this slides uh, on your screens you can clearly see the distinction between a critical review annotated bibliography and literature review okay since we are already short on time i will it will be great if you people just take a screenshot of this slide since the points that i have put over there are pretty much self explanatory okay i will quickly just explain in brief what exactly is the difference between a bibliography and an annotated bibliography since bibliography i guess is a more commonly prevailing word so you must have definitely heard of that well a bibliography it usually just includes the uh, bibliographic information that is the name of the author the title who is the publisher etc right whereas uh, an annotated uh, bibliography it is a summary or you can say an evaluation uh, it it includes a summary it includes a summary or evaluation of both of the sources right so yeah that is all it's about okay oh yes fine uh let's just change the theme of this webinar for a bit and very quickly let me introduce you guys to uh, some cool tips and tricks to make your way easier uh, all right so uh, right away let me mm, begin with the designated best friend of every researcher google scholar right so uh, well write down in the comments when you are listening whenever you are viewing this webinar write down the comments and let me know which one of the tricks were new for you right as i promised you in the beginning uh, i i am very keen at that at this point that at every viewer should at least learn one new thing from this webinar all right Okay, Dr. Patel, thank you so much. I guess the screen is visible now. We are back on track. It is just one of those days when technology yes, is yes, sir. Now it's visible. The, yes. All right. So keywords. The first and foremost thing that I want to talk on about Google Scholar is keywords, right? So, uh, well, uh, think of keywords as the language that Google Scholar speaks. Okay. because you are using keywords correctly it determines how the conversation goes with google scholar okay it determines how effective you are in communicating with google scholar 
because you are responsible for inputting the keywords right so it's up to you whether you have a great conversation with the google scholar or you don't have it right so uh, what we usually do is what we just you know we pick random words from the title or from the abstract of our research and we just use them as keywords random words which are clearly written over there and we just pick them up and we can put it over there right but as you guys can see on your screens keywords include each of the key concepts or variables that you are interested in and it it also includes any synonyms any related terms and etc right so uh, what you need to do is you need to start by creating a list of keywords right prepare a list of keywords that are related to your research question okay you can even uh, keep on adding on to this list uh, if you discover new keywords in the process of your research but uh you need to make a list you need to start with a list of keywords all right uh right so what will happen if we use keywords well trust me on this uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm not able to show you live on google scholar how it works uh, how, what kind of great impact what uh, difference it makes but definitely i uh, let me tell you this thing it will give you better results it will give you more relevant results all right i'll just give you an example right over here how to use it and how to do it some uh, i'll just Yes, please kindly take a screenshot of this particular slide if you guys can. Okay, so these are some of the uh, these are some of the useful databases where you can search for journals and other articles, right? So first and foremost, of course, is the offline one, the your university's library, whatever library uh, you have. I'm pretty sure uh, library these days there are e-library as well, so you can definitely uh, browse through uh, ample lot of plethora of journals and articles, right? So first is your library. Second important thing is your Google Scholar, as I mentioned before already. Then there is one uh, called as JSTOR. It stands for Journal Storage, and uh, then we have EBSCO. It's uh, Uh, it's again a great uh, database it's again a good uh, 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 we uh, you can find a lot of archives you can find a lot of journals over there your project muse you have, we have medline we can we have ecolit there are a lot of things uh, some of them i have clearly mentioned it on the screen so that uh, you might get benefited from this right uh, <coughs> let me give you a very quick example let's say for example if you are doing a phd or if you are doing a social work anything related to uh, social media marketing right so rather than restricting your keywords only to social media hashtag #marketing hashtag #social hashtag #trending don't don't just limit your keywords up to that right what you can do is you can put different different keyword examples like you can go with social you can go with the normal ones that i uh, just said or you can go with the innovative ones as well such as facebook instagram hashtag #twitter hashtag #snapchat you can keep on mentioning all the various forms of social media as well right now if i want to uh, if i want to talk about that what kind of impact uh, social media is doing on adolescents right well <coughs> i can i can uh, i can again break it down into another keyword what i can do is rather than just going for health i can just go for body image i can go for self perception self esteem hashtag #mental health i can go for a lot of different keywords that are related to my research problem right uh, so uh, other than that other than keywords there is something called as boolean operator i don't know if you have aware of this boolean operators this is one of the most beneficial things that will help you to narrow down your search uh, it works in most of the br browsers uh, whatever chrome brave whatever browsers you are using safari or anything and it works at google scholar as well right so get it into your stream get it in your uh, under your skin and you have to start working you have to start using these operators right now if you are not doing it already all right uh, just take a screenshot i'm not going to explain each one of them but i'll just quickly tell you about one or two of them right so uh, okay one key point to note over here is the thing the word that you can see written in uh, uh, written in red you have to use it in the same manner it is case sensitive as well right so you have to write and in all caps you have to write it in capitals to get the exact result okay so for example if i am writing um, let's say if i am writing social media and body image okay so then the operator uh, will work and the uh, browser will give me the resources that contain it both of the keywords both if i use and it's social media and body image then it will find both the keywords okay but instead if i use or o r or then it will find the resources that contain at least one of the synonyms either this or that okay simple like that fine then this is uh, the third one is an hyphen it's it's a hyphen uh, it's dash that we usually call it okay so uh, this one is used to minus anything 
like for example if i'm talking about apple but i'm talking about apple company the uh okay i lost the screen okay yeah so if the if i write uh, apple over there and it keeps on showing me the uh, the images of fruit or it keeps on showing me the ads of companies where i can buy fresh apples then what i can do is i can write apple and i can write minus fruit okay so then it will not show me any results that are related to apple and fruit okay that's how it works uh, some more boolean operators are right over here on your screen Uh, apart from the list that i'm displaying on the screen uh, there are other ones as well there is all in title all in url well uh, you can just uh, uh, as i told in the very beginning of the webinar the things that you that you can find uh, randomly lying on the internet i'm not going to waste much time over that right but yes uh, i just want you to guys uh, I, i want you guys to get acquainted with the things so that you can i'm pretty sure you can uh, i'm uh, my job is just to introduce you to the things and then you can do rest of the exploration on your own i'm pretty sure right uh, just one or two points i want to add over here since we are talking about cool tricks um, uh, i don't know if um, you guys have noticed this thing before uh, there when you open the google scholar page uh, right uh, wherever you find the results and everything right below right under it there is one star icon right there is one star icon uh, if you can uh, i know i'm not making it visible on your screen right now i'm not going to i'm already having some technical issues so i'm not going to risk by sharing the tab with you so just do it on your own just uh, listen to me right now and do it on your own try it on your own and if you have any other issues do let me know right so that star icon is actually to add that particular article or that particular paper to your library right there is one section called my library at the top right hand side top of google scholar over there you can have your own personal uh, space where you can save the research papers and you can even put labels and you can uh, put uh, different you can put them in uh, under different labels right you can put over there like uh, you may know something that you must must read or something probably not don't read just use for that portion like things based on that right and uh, second thing that i want to talk over here about google scholar is there is one double quotation icon as well just next to that star icon what does that double quotation icon do for you that will give you instant citation right i know uh, uh, we use certain softwares we go we do we go through a lot of hassle just to get citation for that particular thing but google scholar it offers you this service right on hand all you have to do is just click on that double quotation icon and you can get instant citations okay uh yes i will quickly jump on because i know the time is running and dr patel is going to be back again any time but uh, it's okay so i'll just begin with the steps uh, that you need to take into consideration while conducting a review okay i'll just quickly put everything on screen at once <clears throat> sorry right so step one is you have to pick a broad topic okay a broad topic Uh, you will be reviewing the literature on a particular topic so knowing what your topic is beforehand it means you can narrow down your search right so at this stage your topic is very broad in the beginning i agree it is very broad okay you won't be able to know the specifics uh, until you do the review itself right uh, for example a student of mine uh, she was doing her phd on the contribution that um, local government made to climate change policy right uh lit literature review it started with a, a very broad topic of climate change policy right um i don't think she focused on the local government or anything of that sort but until she had read the literature right but once she read the literature on climate change policy then she was able to realize that there was a huge gap right so literature review as i told you guys earlier as well it actually helps you to portray the research gap so that uh, and then you know you can address that gap and you can uh you can clearly define a purpose also as well that uh, whatever research you are doing right now how it fits in the uh, with the things that are being done in the past right so having a clearly defined purpose is very important of course uh, otherwise you will just be searching blind right right so step 2 is finding the way in if you search for your broad topic in google scholar you will be presented with millions of results right i'm pretty sure we all have been there right been there done that yes if you search for let's say the climate change policy it will bring you like over 3 million results i'm pretty sure right so obviously it's 
unfeasible to read through all of these fine so where do you start you may ask it's easy just choose the biggest names in your field this is what i personally do choose the biggest names in your field what do you mean biggest names uh, you can go for renowned authors fine and other than renowned authors if you don't know sir we don't know the author we have never heard the names okay i'll just tell you a small hack uh, whenever you go to google scholar or any other similar website what you do whatever what you will see is you will see the number of citations the number of times that particular uh, article has already been cited by other people right so the higher the number that means you definitely should have a look at it right you need to take that paper into your consideration you have to give it a reading you have to see what is there in it that so many people are citing it right so begin with that begin doing with that right next step 3 uh, who is saying what and when okay so your job at this stage is to find out the um, key debates in the field right uh yes i lost the ppt just all right yes so uh you need to see that what is the most significant contribution that person has made then what are they saying it, it how are they saying it what uh, and especially not not just restrict yourself up to what are they saying it but you should definitely go for what are they not saying in that particular study right because the things that they are not saying you get an opportunity it's an open uh, shot for you to cover those aspects in your own research and your projects right step 4 the most important thing but some people call it very boring but trust me guys this is very important notes notes and notes right whenever whenever you read anything you should be taking notes you should be taking notes detailed notes all right these need to cover a lot of points like what is the author saying how it is relevant to your research uh what are the gaps the research gaps what are the weaknesses of other people's work uh what are the key differences what are the other uh, if you can find because while when you are reading something you might enter into another school of thought right so you just need to write it down because at, at times it happens with us when we are in the zone we are getting a lot of ideas but then sometimes we just don't you know feel like it so yeah back, go back to your notes just turn up the pages and follow the leads and get yourself into the zone right you can even use the summary table and the synthesis matrix that uh, i was showing you earlier you can use that format also to uh, take notes on it right uh, step 5 uh, narrow down the field you have to narrow down the field as you uh, as you read the key text uh, you will begin uh, you will you, know, you will begin to see that what are the key debates uh, in your field what are the key points what are the key you will you will see a trend you will see a pattern that uh, the past uh, authors they have uh, they are talking about certain things you will just see a pattern when you will go through a lot of literature okay? so there might be other uh, number of schools you know i mean um, uh, school of thoughts of course so when you begin aware of them you need to start to focus your literature review around them right so you need to narrow it down right uh, step 6 uh, i have already talked about this filter through your growing list of references uh, don't just read everything guys don't just read everything whatever you find you are just reading no you need to find a way to filter through the articles or books that are more relevant to you more, that are more relevant to your study for example you can scan the abstracts the introduction keywords and everything right uh, <coughs> how will you filter uh, i just gave you one small example uh, you can filter these thing in your my library section at google scholar also like you can put labels like must read i may read probably won't read like things like that right so you can do use that also to systematically organize your uh, references and uh, the list step 7 use snowball sampling right what is snowball sampling well i am pretty sure you know it already but uh, as you read through these articles look at their reference list all right and uh, just like think of it as suggested videos that you get on youtube based on your search you put one thing and then it all automatically the ai automatically generates things that are connected to that particular topic right so uh, as and when you read through the articles Uh, they will all have one bibliography list or reference list at the bottom right so collect articles that you think will be relevant okay and then you can use them in your literature review fine right? so th this entire procedure is called as snowball sampling right um next step it is think about the questions that have not been asked i already told you the things that are not been covered in the past uh, uh, thesis and past projects 
that is the opportunity that is the window of opportunity for you to work on your current project fine step 9 is writing up your literature review the most uh, important thing of course because no matter whatever preparations you do it will all be vain until unless you actually write up your own literature review right so uh, what you need to do is i'm just quickly going to elaborate this thing for you uh, the first and foremost thing what you need to do is synthesize not summarize right you need to synthesize the stuff you need to write you need to evaluate the things you don't just quote other authors what they did and what they said in their own time right uh, and another thing that you need to uh, take care is you need to write early and you need to make that first draft very quickly because what we do is we read a lot of articles then we just forget then we are like sir i got busy with other stuff i had other projects at hand i could not devote that much time so by the time you start writing you those keywords that all the text all the literature that you read all that thing is vain in now because now you cannot remember you cannot correlate that much what you could have done when you just read the article right so your first draft is very important you need to write it asap you have to write as soon as possible possible the moment you start writing you start working on your notes make those tables if you want and from the tables you can go and writing on your first draft all right uh well equally uh, you need to understand one more thing uh, while we are here that uh, you need to know when to stop okay you need to know when to stop reviewing the literature you cannot just keep on going and going but the sooner you go out and do your field work the better it is okay uh you know uh, i heard my colleague saying the literature review is a very cruel mistress right it's a very uh, she is a very cruel mistress why because you struggle to fully nail it down uh, nail down the various you know components and you you cannot fully understand how everything you have read is related right but don't despair my dear friends my dear students aspects of the yes right so uh, the things the portions that you cannot relate the things that you cannot fully understand uh, whatever is written in the literature you will get a clear concept you will get a better picture when you will enter the field and you will start to collect your data all right so don't fall into the trap of spending too much time uh, in the library just go out there uh, go do some field work and practically correlate with your literature with your work all right yes i will just jump upon this slide yeah okay all right so screenshot time right save this slide use it implement it and thank me later okay just say all these things i have already spoken and we have already talked about most of the parts over here that are being mentioned okay to overcome the issue that i'm having with sharing my ppt what we can do is i will uh, share this ppt with uh, dr patel later on and I, i think he can provide it to the students later right okay although i am not sure why is it happening but at times you just cannot win over technology okay fine okay so once again uh, as i said uh, earlier that you probably won't be able to read uh, whatever you know absolutely everything you cannot read everything whatever you find out there right <coughs> so what you need to do there are certain questions that you need to ask yourself for each publication right the questions are on the screen i'm i'm just quickly going to skip this slide as well since i can see the clock ticking on my head right another important aspect that i wanted to talk about uh, is the different ways to organize a literature review all right so there are um, various approaches to organize the body of a literature review okay uh, you should have a rough idea of your strategy before you start writing so depending on the length of your literature review what you can do is you can combine several of these strategies right for example like i mean uh, although I, you can see like six strategies over there but it's not restricted the slide is, uh, the approach should not be restricted of using only one idea or one strategy you can make a combination uh, of one or more than one right so like for example your overall structure can be thematic but you know the 
each thing uh, each theme you can discuss it chronologically you can do that also right so i'll just quickly try to explain in brief what are all these things first is chronological uh, this is one of the most simple approach uh, you know what what you do is you just simply uh, trace the development of your topic over time okay so what you do is you just arrange them by years like older to new uh, in that way right uh, then uh, what is uh, next is uh, uh, thematic okay so in thematic what do we do uh, if you find some recurring central themes what you can do is you can organize your literature review into subsections fine that you know each subsection can talk about a different aspect of that topic right for example if you are like if you are reviewing literature about inequalities in migrant health outcomes okay key themes key themes might be like they might include healthcare policy language barriers uh, you can even take cultural uh, attitudes the legal status um, economic access you know the age of the people demographics and everything right so a lot of lot of themes right that way uh, next is like methodological so if you draw your sources from different disciplines as i told you in the beginning also you should do that it is a very good uh, uh, habit to inculcate so if you draw your sources from different disciplines or different fields uh, what you can do because of course as we know different fields the they use they tend to use different research methods right so uh, you might want to compare the results and conclusions that uh, emerge from different approaches right like um, you can divide uh, you can again divide you can you can look at the results that have emerged in qualitative versus quantitative research right so uh, empirical versus theoretical research right things like that so you can do uh, that way also um the last is that is very commonly used that is theoretical uh what do you do in theoretical framework a literature review it is actually it is it is often the foundation for a theoretical framework right uh you can use it to discuss various um, theories various models various definition of key concepts that are being given by other authors and renowned authors etc right so uh, you might argue you might also argue for the relevance of a specific theoretical approach if you think something if you don't agree with certain opinions you can put that thing also in your uh, resource right uh, fine yes guidelines yes this is another uh, important slide that i want to talk but uh, i can see there are just 8 minutes left so just take a screenshot of this slide it begins from this point we have already talked about all of these points i have tried to cover each and every one of the points in my webinar in my presentation today i know i am going at one gear faster than my usual speed but you need to uh, understand my pain also the problem is the topic is so vast there is so much to talk about this topic in very little time so yes uh, just quickly take a screenshot and what we can do is uh, just go through the things these things are very self explanatory how things work yes i know i know uh, I, you lost me over there we are back yeah uh, so may i yes. can you please show the previous slide again just just a moment just just to have a look sure. all right right fine right right so these are the guidelines that you need to take into consideration that i was talking about earlier sure. uh, i'm 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 really sorry dr nidhi i'm having some technical difficulties today no sir that's fine that's happening. not an but, issue sir. not an issue pardon, pardon, you can proceed sir that's i understand yes thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, all right so uh, the crux of today's session the guidelines we have already covered uh, i guess uh, you have already seen the slide i'm really sorry to skim that particular through uh, to glide through that slide very fast or, or i mean i personally like to spend at least 5 to 10 minutes on that slide but we are really uh, i'm just really racing against the time so yeah quickly moving on uh, tips to elevate your review what are the things that you can do this is again just a summary this is just again just a crux we have already talked about those things but let's just get it done be critical you just don't have to just you know list you you just don't list the authors you have to critically engage with each text and this is where the word synthesize comes in because uh, in uh, when you are summarizing what happens is 
you are just quoting the authors, right? But instead of quoting, just critically engage with it and uh, write some evaluation about the same, right? Second is you need to get feedback from uh, as many people as you can. So the more people who read your review, the better it is for you, fine? Third important point is structure the review thematically, okay? You need to connect the dots between the literature. Don't just throw random literature, random, uh, you just keep on mentioning the things randomly. He said, this is what was written in 2019. This was done in 2020. It will not make any sense until and unless you connect the dots and then you put, you find the gaps and then you fit your research right in. All right. So uh, please do that. Do not just keep on randomly throwing the literature all over the project. Right. Last most important thing is know when to stop. If something does not make sense right now, it will definitely do when you start your field work. Okay, so don't just spend your uh, uh, get stuck in libraries and you know go out there do some field work and then things might make more sense to you. All right, next this was the part that I was uh, telling you in the beginning. I have made a list of certain softwares and certain websites, certain blogs certain links that uh, there are some tools that I've come across and which I think they might come handy to you guys as well, right? Feel free to explore them. Uh, I won't be able to demonstrate them to you uh, live right now, but in case if you face any problems with any of them, uh, feel free to contact me personally. Uh, always happy to help, right? Uh, yes, I guess this is pretty much the most important slide in the entire presentation. Like I said earlier, just because you are paraphrasing literature does not mean it does not give you the right that you should not give credit to its original writer, right? So here is the list of resources that I have used in my present uh, in my current presentation. Okay, so yes, definitely, I'm not taking credit of all the of all the content that is that was being shown in the PPT. I'm not gonna boast. I'm not gonna say that I came up with the entire thing originally. Yes, of course, there was some citation. There was some work that I have used of other authors. And here is the list. So I hope you guys will start uh, start writing uh, the citation and start giving the due credit as well. Right. I will quickly sum up today's uh, presentation, today's webinar uh, on review, review of literature. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, it's natural. It's very normal. It is natural to be scared of the literature review. Right. To conduct one, you have to uh, read you have to process and most important, you have to synthesize hundreds of thousands of words, right? But it is not an impossible task. It might sound tedious, but it's not impossible task, right? Keep the things that we have discussed today in your mind and refer to it. Keep coming back to it whenever you feel yourself getting lost. OK, uh, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you for your patience. Over to you, Dr. Patel. Uh, yeah. Just a second. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's a very enlightened and uh, informative session for our research scholar. Sir, one of the our research scholar asked one question, and that is, uh, which method is more preferable for review of literature right now, sir? Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, I will just quickly jump on to the slide once again. I know it's, uh, uh, I will just take you back to the point where I was talking about the ways. Yes. Right. See, the point is uh, when when you are doing the review of literature, uh, it, it's not about trend, right? It's not anything uh, related to reels or it's not anything that you see that uh, this method is trending right now. So we should use this kind of method. And if I use this one, the guide is going to give me better marks. It will look better. It, it's not about that, right? So. Yes. So whatever method you choose, it does not. Uh, it will not hamper the quality. The point is, as I clearly mentioned, as I explained, as I tried to elaborate the uh, thing that you have to do in that method, whatever suits your research, whatever fits your research problem, you need to take that particular method, right? There is nothing, there is no uh, one thing for all, like uh, in, in one method suits everything. There's nothing like that. So whatever fits your boat, whatever floats your boat, you have to go with that. 
right so i, I since i am not aware with the research that that particular student is uh, carrying on so i cannot comment in particular that which method they should opt for but depending upon their own research they should come up with a solution thank you sir hello right yes sir, i can hear good morning sir myself sir path shala assistant professor working at uh, pal institute of commerce uh, indeed it was a great session sir uh, we have one uh, question from uh, another research scholar so i would like to ask you sir uh, sure please go on. i'm i'm just losing the voice in between please go on please go on yes yes so sir uh, what what are the do's and don'ts so that uh, we can a research scholar can uh, on the basis of that do's and don'ts he or she can select the review that it is suitable for the his study or not on what factors we can decide they should be considered for the thesis okay. or not all right okay okay uh, before i start answering your question i would like to uh, take uh, 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 permission from dr patel since it's already 11 am sir am i allowed to uh, speak for a few more minutes Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Not an issue, sir. Okay. Please. Sir. All right. All right. All right. I, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. I um, the student that uh, asked the question. I'm so sorry. I, I forgot the name. A uh, not student. I'm so sorry. Your faculty. I heard that part. Uh, but yeah, I I I lost the communication when you were telling your name. So I'm so sorry for that. Sir, but yes. Uh, sir, he is the assistant professor in our department, and his research scholar asked two and questions related with that. Uh, whatever the sir shared with you, and that uh -huh. this is colors from uh, post graduation, sir. So that's okay, why okay. sir asked, please sir. Okay, okay, lovely, lovely, perfect. Not, not an issue, not an issue. All right. So, uh, what are the do's and don'ts? Right. Uh, I'll jump on. I'll quickly uh, write at the onset. I'll talk about the do's, the things that you should definitely you should. It is a must. You have to do those things, right? so the first and foremost thing that I was talking about in this in my entire uh, research uh, in my uh, entire webinar also. few key points that you can keep in mind is you can the first word is to synthesize and not summarize right just don't keep on uh, quoting the uh, past uh, authors or anything just don't uh, get into that practice because what students at this uh, pg level or rather at any level what they tend to do is they just go to google scholar they just find the title of the article they just paste it over there and they paste that uh, link on on some citation generator then they get the site citation and they put it at the bottom in the bibliography that sort of is not just about mentioning the title or uh, anything of that sort right? you need to link that particular article that what past or what author has written in that thing and how you are using in which particular area which section you are using in your current research right so you need to make that link you need to connect the dots so don't just go for mentioning names that's all so you already covered that also that you should take notes right a lot of notes as boring as it sounds as monotonous as it sounds as tough as whatever you want to call it i it's a good literature review will demand a lot of hard work from your side you need to take a lot of notes and by notes i just don't mean that you have to take a pen and paper and you have to start writing in modern times you can keep you can do it over a laptop in in word format soft soft copy or anything or even you can just open your whatsapp and you can record a voice note for yourself right and then you can use that also so you have to take notes because the problem is it's 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 i'm not i'm not belittling anyone that do uh, you are the one who forgets it's normal human tendency whenever we read there are a lot of thoughts that are coming in our head but the moment we you just close that tab or you just close that article you they will just get lost in your head and you, it it will be something like you know there are things that we we keep it somewhere and we just forget that we uh, where did we keep it right so it becomes one of those thoughts so rather than just reading because i know people tend to read a lot they are like they come to me sir we have done we have read so so many things we have even reached page 5 of google scholar which they think is a big feat or achievement for them but but yes uh, the problem is that it does not matter how much you read until and unless you pen it down yourself yourself right so second important thing that that will be definitely will be this thing right uh, uh, one more i will cover over here is uh, strap you should prepare as soon as possible because again the same thing 
uh, if you lose the train of thoughts after reading then it will be of use, right? So just keep these things in your mind that I'm pretty sure that you can uh, get some benefit out of these things. Right, thank you. I hope I have uh, answered the question. Anna, because uh, this is one of do's and don'ts are one of those. Yes, yes sir, definitely, sir. So what are the do's and don'ts? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes, we are back, sir. Yes, I hope uh, I have answered the question, sir. Yeah, yes, sir, yes. definitely. Yes. I would have to request to Dr. Patel to arrange another webinar if I want to talk about the do's and don'ts. I guess we can go and on and on about this particular topic. Sure, sir. Yeah. Sure, sir. Uh, shortly, <laughs> we will arrange it and we again, we invite to you for the same uh, tools and techniques for that uh, regulated uh, literature review, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, over to you, Path. Uh, so, uh, before a formal vote of thanks, uh, good morning, Dr. Odet. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. So, uh, uh, definitely, it is a wonderful session to hear you on the platform of Parol University webinar series. Uh, we are organizing a series of webinars since 2020. So, wonderful session. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, a lot of students who are of um, research background or might be the research scholar, whosoever is listening live to you or might be later on. So it is a wonderful and great insights you have. And, and I would definitely say the PPTs are wonderful. The animation skills are wonderful. And, you know, this is always your USP. So uh, uh, it is appreciable at our end that, yes, uh, uh, Many of the students from this background might have gained the, uh, you know, insight and knowledge with with a very extensive, uh, say, the topic of a research. So, uh, although it is not possible, yes, definitely within an hour uh, to conclude this review of literature, it is a vast headed topic. So, but uh, within a short span of time, you have, uh, you know, said yes for our invitation. Uh, so, I definitely appreciate uh, that efforts. Thank you once again from Parol of uh, Thomas Parol University. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, thank you. Over to Pat, sir. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. So, starting with all those kind words, I, Pat Chabra, assistant professor from, on the behalf of Faculty of Commerce and Parol University, I thank you from extremely uh, and we are sir, very much delighted to have more such fruitful sessions as you have enlightened us, as well as the research scholar, as well as the faculties to have your inputs are indeed fruitful for us, as well as to the research scholars too, and to the PG scholars too. We would be very much uh, happy to arrange your such uh, do's and don'ts webinar for sure in the coming days. And Thank you, everyone, the team of Pal Institute of Commerce who directly or indirectly helped to make this webinar a great success. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ashwin, sir. Thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Please, you are most welcome at Coral University, the campus of commerce, for more interactions. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you. Sir. Thank, thank you, you. Udit, sir. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. sir. Thank you. So, sorry, sorry for the technical interruptions in between. Next time, if I come, I'll definitely come with a better Wi-Fi connection for sure. sure it's, it's not <laughs> an issue, sir. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you Thank so you, much. Sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Now we can leave the meeting, sir. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. <laughs>